Hello, and welcome to the first episode of my Building Vanilla Mechs series. In this video, I'll be taking you through the steps I use to build vanilla-controlled bipeds, starting with legs and walk cycles. So, let's get started. Mech legs can be built in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and some designs work better than others. Building mechs isn't a one-size-fits-all process, and there is a fair amount of trial and error involved, so you should always be prepared to make adjustments to your design as it develops. The three most common types of legs are plantigrade, undulagrade, and digitigrade, or more simply put, forward knee, reverse knee, and double knee. Each one has its own pros and cons, but the two main things to consider when designing your legs are, can they reach far enough for your mech to move? and can they lift high enough to clear the floor when moving. A simple way of working this out is to build a row of blocks in line with the feet of your mech. This way you'll be able to see how the legs move in relation to each other and the floor. What we want is enough distance between the legs that they can create a small amount of lift as they travel forwards and backwards, but not so much that the mech loses balance and falls over. Another way I've found to help with this is to look at your mech from above. Take note of the width of the hips and try and set the leg limits so that the forward and reverse positions roughly form a square. If your stance is too wide, you will likely fall over forward or backward. If it's too narrow, it will likely fall over sideways. And remember, it also helps to make sure all of your rotors and hinges are the same way round on each leg. This will make the next step much easier. Once you have a rough idea of how you want your mech to stand, it's time to start programming it. Thanks to the last few updates, it is now easier than ever to build vanilla mechs. So the first few blocks you're going to need are some event controllers and some lights. You'll need two controllers and one light for each leg. The lights turning on and off is what will make the legs move forward and backwards. The next thing you'll need to do is start working out what velocities you need to make sure the legs move in a nice fluid pattern. This is the stage that requires the most trial and error. Most of these settings will depend entirely on the design of your mech. In this example, I've started with all of the hip rotors moving at 12 RPM to demonstrate the differences between each leg design. So to start, what you'll need to do is go to the first walk controller and select Block On Off as the event. Select the leg lights from the available blocks menu and click on the Select Actions menu. The first action you'll want to set up is moving the hip forward and backward. I usually set it up so that turning the light on moves the leg forward and turning the light off moves it backwards. So on the first page in slot 1 you'll want to select your leg rotor and choose the new set velocity action. In this case we'll choose 12 RPM. And in the second slot we'll do the opposite and choose minus 12 RPM. Now if we turn the leg on and off, the hip should move back and forth. The second action you'll want to set up is moving the foot. If you've set the limits up correctly, the foot should have the same amount of travel as the hip. So you should be able to set up at the same velocities and they should move nicely together. The third action you'll want to set up is making the leg lift as it moves forward. You'll want the knee to lift slightly quicker than the hip moves forward so that the foot doesn't drag on the floor. In this example, we'll set it to 16 RPM in the first slot, and as a failsafe, we'll do the opposite in the second slot. When building double knee joints, simply set both hinges to move at the same time. Now you should have a leg that can lift up and move forward, but you'll need it to drop back down again. So now you need to set up the second event controller. In this controller, you should select Angle Changed as the event and choose the knee hinge or rotors from the available blocks menu. The angle threshold and condition will depend entirely on how you set up the knees and what direction they're facing. I usually set the trigger either on or slightly before the knee's maximum limit. So in this example we'll set it to 89 and click on the Select Actions button. The first action you'll want to set up is making the knee drop back down again. So we'll select our knee hinge, select Set Velocity and choose an RPM that gives us as smooth a motion as possible. In this case, 16 RPM. Some leg setups might require other movements in the second controller. 
For example, the plantigrade legs need an extra little boost to the foot to keep it level with the floor as it moves forward. In this example, that would be 20 RPM. Once you have that set up, you should now have a leg that does a full step animation by turning a light on and off. You can now do the same thing for the other leg, as most of the settings should be exactly the same and easy to copy over. After you've done that, you should now have a pair of legs that can perform a walking animation by alternating lights on and off. And now it's time to move on to the next step. Now that you have a pair of moving legs, you'll probably want a way to automate them. Unfortunately, timer blocks can't count faster than one second without using scripts, but we can get something else to count for us. This can be achieved very easily by adding another pair of event controllers, a rotor, and a timer block. The event controllers will look at the rotor, and as the rotor spins, it will cause the timer to trigger, and the timer triggering will activate the leg lights. The timer isn't absolutely necessary, the actions it contains can be put straight into the event controllers, but it does make it handy to have a manual trigger for the walk cycle. First we want to set up the walk cycle timer, which is actually incredibly simple. Just click on the setup actions button, select both of the leg lights, and choose the block on off action. The next thing you'll want to do is set up the walk cycle rotor. The only setting that really needs changing is to add a little braking torque so that the rotor head doesn't free spin when it's switched off. Then you can set up the event controllers, set them both to the angle changed event, and select the rotor from the available blocks menu. You'll want to set the angle thresholds 180 degrees apart from each other so that the rotor counts twice in one rotation. And due to event controllers being a little bit fussy about detecting movement at high velocities between minus 10 and positive 10, I usually set the first event controller to 10 degrees and the second event controller to 190 degrees. For both controllers, we can click on the Select Action button, select our timer, and choose the Trigger Now action in the first slot. So now that you've set up the walk cycle system, you should be able to make your legs move by turning the rotor on and off and applying some velocity. You can adjust the speed of the walk cycle by increasing and decreasing the velocity of that rotor. And you can stop it by switching the rotor off altogether. Now it's time to move on to the next step and do a little bit of testing. The most difficult part of making a biped mech, besides the walking animation, is getting it to stay standing up. This can be achieved with a few gyroscopes, and depending on how big your mech is, you may require more. So for some simple balance control, we'll need to build a few gyros, and set them on override controls on. Leaving all of the override settings on default will help the mech maintain its current position, so they don't need to be changed. I usually start by adding more than I need because as the mech develops it will gain more mass and need more assistance. Then we need to add a gyro to control the mech with. For a small design like this, one is more than enough. You may need to go back and fine tune some of these leg settings at this stage to make sure everything works correctly. And now that your mech can successfully walk and stay upright, you'll want a way to properly control the walk cycle. For the walk controls, you'll need yet another event controller, and a thruster, and a control seat. You can use any type of thruster as a trigger depending on your environment, so in this example I've used an ion thruster. Set the new walk controller to the thrust percentage event. Set the condition to greater than and the threshold to something above zero. Select the thruster from the available blocks and click on the select action button. Then it's as simple as selecting the walk cycle rotor and choosing the turn block on action in the first slot and the turn block off action in the second slot. Place your control seat in the desired location and turn off the inertial dampeners. You won't need them and it will only mess with the walk system. Now you can cut your mech down and try it out properly.
You should now be able to start and stop the walk cycle using the forward control button and turn left and right using the mouse or right stick. Some other things to take into consideration whilst designing your mech are things such as share inertia tensor. Some leg designs will require it and some won't. The share inertia tensor helps by sharing the physics between different subgrids and ultimately it helps reduce the wobble in some designs. And also, center of mass. Preferably you want your center of mass to be as close to the center of your mech as possible. Different blocks have different weights and you need to take this into consideration while designing your mech. And that is about it for the basics of making biped legs and walk controls. In the next episode I'll go into how I build AI controlled arm weapons. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.